Anyway, bringing a close to this, I knew we were in trouble when this started with more than 30 minutes remaining in the program. The world title match, long awaited, John Moxley versus Twinkle Toes McFinger Bang. They started Moxley, in, a, in, in this time he's in a warehouse. Possibly, I don't know, maybe he's working UPS part-time. It's the holidays, pick up a couple of dollars or whatever. But he's in a warehouse, did a great promo as usual. A great promo, he comes right off of it, rolls right off the tongue. It sounds natural, he's got good verbiage. And the last word, he, he, he did the tribute to Pat. The crowd will go banana. Um, the question is, can he actually depart from his tradition especially with Olivier and have a real major league wrestling promotion world title match like a flair and steamboat or whatever the K instead of another indie garbage match. There's the question. Don Callis is on color. Don Callis. And here's the, I've liked Don. I'm the one that got Don his spot in the WWF and he's admitted this. We talked about it um, in, in 97 or whatever it was. And I've talked to him a couple of conversations over the last couple of years at length. He knows all this bullshit is bullshit. He knows this hokey, phony, winking at the fucking people shit is bullshit. But he's still, he's, at, he's running a wrestling company that just had a goddamn murder mystery. So he, he knows, but he, I guess because when you get down to the level of niche audience... It's not even a niche. It's more like just a nook. That impact is you just have to do whatever you can do to keep those people entertained. They know they're not going anywhere, but like I said, top of the program, you can't kill them. But I've talked to Don, like I said, and I, Don, and he was a tally. He knows a lot of this shit's goofy, but he picks weird friends. And one of his weird friends is Twinkle Toes. And he just loves him because apparently... And I did not know this until recently. Now, how? what is this relationship? Kenny Olivier's uncle was the famous Canadian wrestler, the Golden Sheik. They're talking about this on this program. And Callis once, did Callis manage the Sheik or the Sheik managed Callis or what was that relationship? I don't know who managed who, but Callis I... Callis managed the, the Golden Sheik. I certainly I wouldn't say famous. <laughs> well, that's what I was about to say. They keep saying this famous Canadian wrestler, the Golden Sheik. And that was the the, the picture that was on the uh, in the frame, not a skylight frame, but a regular frame, on Olivier's hotel end table when he was doing that awkward sit-down where they had it framed real weird, the camera shot, so you would have to look at the picture frame. That was... Don Callis and the Golden Sheik. And I asked you right before we went on the program today, because you're pretty good, Brian. Everybody knows you know about every name that has ever been involved in wrestling, and I ain't too shabby myself. And I said, you? Golden Sheik? Anybody? Bueller? Bueller? Who the fuck is the Golden Sheik? I have never heard of a Canadian wrestler called the Golden Sheik. Did he just wrestle in a certain playground in Winnipeg. They hired the God, Dr. Luther, a 50 something year old Japanese outlaw wrestler. There's never been on television before. They signed him up and now they're praising Canadian independent wrestlers that are so obscure that we've never heard of them. Maybe he was the Tokyo Josie princess stardom twinkle toes champion. Anyway, so this world title match between Olivier and Moxley, I fast forwarded the entrances and saved myself four minutes just for the entrances of two guys. And then they went straight to the break, come back and they start the match. And I look, they've got 30 minutes left in the show. I'm like, Oh fuck, this is going to be just egregious. Everything Kenny Olivier does looks like he's performing it. Um, Oh, no, it was, I, I made the note here, as the announcer said, uh, Olivier's uncle trained Don Callis, is what it was. Why didn't he train Olivier? Because Callis wasn't too bad. Maybe Olivier could have picked something up from Uncle Golden Sheik. This was another schizophrenic exhibition by Dean Ambrose. They start, the first segment, they start with wrestling moves. They actually do it. 
headlocks, takeovers. They were doing pro wrestling. Olivier can chop, but he throws just ridiculously rotten punches. But they actually started wrestling, and they waited. I timed them almost four minutes this time to go out to the floor. And then John Moxley reverted to type and started having another indie level garbage match that he cannot stay away from. In front of the referee, they go to the floor, they bounce each other off the rails and the aprons and out in the seats in the crowd. The referee quit counting and just jumped out and joined them. And JR even said, Why is he out there on the floor with him? A minute and 45 seconds by my actual watch time before Moxley rolled in to break the count of 20. And then they went out on the floor for another 45 seconds till they went to the break. But they were in picture in picture, which I never watch because nobody does, because you've got to be fucking out of your mind to watch a little tiny goddamn box with audio of a commercial. Nothing's worth that. But during the picture in picture, they fought all around the arena and fell sloppily over chairs and shit for the entire three-minute break. Was this... They didn't announce this as no count-out, did they? Did they announce this as no disqualification? Not that I recall. Or is it just that neither one of these guys, especially Moxley, can actually have anything but an indie garbage match every fucking time with Moxley? But this one was different. They had so much time. After that break they went to, they got back in the ring. There's 20 minutes, by the way, to fucking go. They got back in the ring, and in the next act of this play, they switched from the indie garbage matches on the floor not using the ring to every indie Japanese match in the ring where they just do shit back and forth to each other with no effect and for no apparent reason. And that was the next segment to the break. Then they come back from that break, and Twinkle Toes gets his dive in where his opponent's on the floor, standing up on his feet, Twinkle Toes turns his back on the guy and runs two ring links away from him, back toward him, and dives over the top rope, and the guy that's been standing there that whole time watching him catches him. So we had to get that in. And then, Brian, I swear to God to you, What came up next, I would have fast-forwarded to the end right there, but I didn't, at this point, want to miss anything in this match that I can insult about this shitty exhibition. Moxley hits his double-arm DDT finish, the paradigm shift, right? Olivier protects his finish. They always talk about nobody ever kicks out of the one-wing fairy. Well, Moxley hits the fucking paradigm shift. Olivier's laying there out cold, and Moxley rolls out to the floor, goes underneath the ring, and starts throwing chairs in the ring. Why didn't he cover the guy and beat him? Also, is this no disqualification now in this act of the play? Because he's doing it right in front of the referee, throwing the chairs in. Poor Paul Turner. He was a good referee in Ring of Honor because the guys actually didn't bury him all the time. Uh, So Moxley then takes two of the chairs sets him up facing each other, picks Olivier up and sits him down and sits down in front of him and asks Olivier to fucking hit him. And then they sit there in the chairs and slap and punch each other. Now we've come back from Japan, Outlaw Mud Show Japan, and now we're back to every outlaw garbage match that's ever been held in a garage converted rec center or a fucking barn at a county fair this was the stupidest of a world championship match of supposedly the second biggest promotion in the country and they can't get out of the goddamn mindset that they're in front of 200 goofs in a barn someplace this was i i would have fast forwarded but at this point i was so insulted by this match i wanted to see more to insult Now they hit each other with shit back and forth without selling it. And then Moxley hits another paradigm shift, and this time he covers, gets a two count. Now he's trying to win. Is he the baby face? I assume he is, not only because of what happens at the finish, but also because Olivier has been ever more smarty pants. So the the baby face had a chance to win the match, but instead was stupid, went outside, got chairs, engaged in phony shit, with the Heelys wrestling, and now he's trying to win, but he can't, and I'm supposed to feel bad for him? He's a fucking idiot. He's a fucking goof. So then, 
Olivier has Mox Moxley stood there with his back to the turnbuckle and looking over his shoulder while Olivier climbed to the top rope and drop kicked him off of it. And he was looking over his shoulder at him the whole time standing there. Then Olivier hits the, as excrement called it, the Tiver, Tiger Driver 98. You know, all the people that work over at fucking Arby's over in Taylorsville, Kentucky are going, well, goddamn, I'm glad we know what the name of that is now. Olivier then missed Moxley's jaw completely with two of his little prancy knee lifts, but he slapped his boot so it was cool. The announcer said, wow, it sounded like a shot went off. It would look like it, too, if his knee had been anywhere near Moxley's head, but since it went past it. Then Twinkle Toes pointed and pranced a little bit and did his fancy horse show step. Have you ever seen that in the horse shows? It's, it's called a canter. <laughs> where they they have the little fancy canter and he did that little thing as he leaned into the ropes and goes for another knee but moxley blocks it so the twinkle toes canter was then they did more shit to each other and then finally it all fell apart when olivier tried to position moxley he gave moxley a bump and then he was going to go to the top but he had to position moxley so he had to bend over and whisper to him hey move over a little for me and he kind of pulled him around a little bit so that didn't look phony or anything and then finally he gets him in position. He goes to the top like he's going to moonsault him because he's, he's climbed to the top and he's facing outside the ring. But as he gets to the top rope, Moxley gets up, stands up just instantly like he was playing possum. And they tried to act like that uh, Olivier jumped off the top rope down to the floor to get away from Moxley. But what it was was Olivier got up there. Moxley was supposed to get to his feet and go shove him off. But Moxley was too late. Olivier lost his balance. He had to jump anyway. And Moxley was about five feet away on the shove. So now they have to go back out to the floor. And, and then... Moxley gives uh, Olivier the double arm DDT into one of the space heaters. They've got it ringside. And the doctor comes to check and everything comes to a halt. And this is so bad. They don't need to kill any momentum that they've got going at this point. And then Don Callis goes to check on Olivier. And Moxley tosses Olivier back in the ring. But Callis is up on the apron telling the referee he's hurt. They won't turn Callis's ring microphone on so we can get that point across. Finally, they do, and he says, he's hurt. And fucking Moxley turns around and decks Callus, but Olivier gets the microphone. He used to do the same spot with the tennis racket, same deal. He hits Moxley with the microphone. This is a guy that's taking bumps off of goddamn platforms and ladders and threw into barbed wire and into thumbtacks, and he's been beat by multiple people with every chair and bat and stick. He gets hit with a ring mic that might weigh a pound and a half and he gets juice and he's on weird street. He's got goofiness about him. Can't stand up. And here comes Olivier with four of those goofy knee lifts followed by the one winged fairy. One, two, three. And now he's the new champion. I thought this would never be, never be over. At least there weren't any thumbtacks in it. But couldn't couldn't they save money on Moxley by just taping one of his matches and just airing it over and over again since every single one of them is the same? And most of them take place on the floor. Most of them bury the referee. Most of them have this stupid garbage death match bullshit about chairs or I'll hit you and you hit me or thumbtacks or whatever. It's all the same. I don't know. How much did you love it? I didn't love it at all. It took a while to get going. I don't know how much of that was the weather, how much of it was just these guys, but I've said it before, Moxley... And don't don't go 30 minutes in 40-degree weather. Moxley does great promos, and he's awful in the ring. I don't think he has any idea how to put a match together. I'm convinced of it more and more the more I watch him. He has no idea how to put a match together. Once they brought the chairs in the ring, like you, I was like, why didn't he pin them there? But then... It's one thing to not pin him and go get a chair, and he's lost his temper. He's going to bash him with the chair. Yeah. To put the chairs there and just sit with the guy and start trading punches in the middle of the match, that was stupid. Yeah, and you know what? Because that's what they do in outlaw shows, which is where John Moxley's heart is. He's uh, He started out as a garbage wrestler, 
and he got a chance to work for the biggest company in the world and learned nothing and went back to doing garbage wrestling, except for this time for a bigger budget, bigger paycheck than he than he that he was doing before he went to the WWE. And he learned nothing because he thinks this shit is the way it's supposed to be done. And then, like you said, the spot with the cabinet, and then all of a sudden, a shot with the microphone is what did the, <laughs> is what did the real damage there, it seems. Remember when he had Jake Hager and the whole inner circle on him, beating him up in the breezeway, hitting him with garbage cans? He wouldn't stay wouldn't down. He wouldn't stay down. He wouldn't stay down for that. <laughs> Little did they know, all you need to do is get a microphone from Radio Shack, and you could do the job. And the one thing I did write down was how many knees is Omega going to use? It's over and over and over, just knee after knee after knee. I didn't like this match. And it's not like that that thing looks like like a, the Mr. Wrestling 2 knee lift or Ricky Gibson's baby face knee lift. No, I mean, look, it's... it's or the big knee lifts. It's, see, it's I, I, fucking... I think it looks fine at times. At times, it looks all right. Sometimes he can hit it, and sometimes the guy knows but how when to you, take it. But, you know, Mr. Wrestling 2 didn't do his knee lift six times in a match. No, as a matter of fact, he, he figured out when he started working with Bobby Eaton and Bobby took such great bumps, he was hitting Bobby with two or three in a match and, and then still losing. And he figured that out after about a week. He said, fuck it. He stopped doing that. So I wasn't crazy about this match, and I've said it before. I'm, I don't hate Omega like you do. I also don't think he's as great as some other people do. And I've enjoyed some of his matches in the past. I did not enjoy this one. I've not enjoyed anything he has done with Moxley. They had that garbage match in Baltimore, the Chris Cruz match last year. And I really didn't enjoy this. I, you know, this is the finish I expected. I expected him to get the title from Moxley. And now this will lead to a long run. And then eventually Adam Page will beat him. And Adam Page will kick out of the one winged angel. Will be the first guy to do that. And there's Adam Page being elevated. But I did not care for this match. I didn't like this match. And then there's the post-match. Well, yes, because then, uh, obviously, you know, it was all a plot by the evil Don Callis, and he and Olivier run off and go to the car, and in answer to the question, what's going to happen, you can find out next Tuesday. No, Dynamite's on Wednesday. I mean, impact on access. <laughs> so now they're cross promote. There, you could be in the federal witness protection program and be on the impact roster and still be safe and sleep well at night. I just saw numbers. They, they actually released numbers. They had 166,000 viewers uh, on access for impact last week or the pre most recent show or whatever. So basically about half the audience that used to watch Memphis wrestling on channel five every Saturday morning in the entire North American continent of eh, because Callis is friends with Olivier. Tony Khan is an idiot and doesn't see when people are taking advantage of him. They're trying to resurrect this goddamn white elephant of a promotion. Once again, impact on the back of this billionaire's national television. And he's letting it go on. The zombie of wrestling promotions now uh, uh, invading all friends wrestling. Oh, golly. They just had a murder mystery and it did a detective show on impact. The guy in, was getting married, was shot and laid there with, you know, a fucking bloody bullet wound. And Tommy Dreamer dressed up like Sherlock Holmes to find out who it was that shot him. Meanwhile, over on the other channel, we've got the musical variety show and comedy hour. So together, this will be an entertainment juggernaut. They can do musicals, variety shows, sketch comedy, detectives, dramas, murder mysteries. The only thing they can't do is wrestling. In terms of this deal, whatever the uh, actual deal is between Impact and AEW, and AEW from Tony Khan down to the balding bucks have made it clear that they're willing to work with anyone, it seems like, uh, you know, as long as... <laughs> they get along with them, I would think. But this deal is clearly much better for Impact than it is for AEW, just you on the think? surface. Just on the I mean, it makes no sense elevating Impact to this degree. I don't think this makes any sense at all. I, I know there are some people out there saying like, oh my God, the dream matches. You know, imagine FTR versus the Motor City Machine Guns or Eddie Edwards doing something. And, you know, I don't watch Impact. 
I, mean, I, I don't I don't expect them to make any better talent decisions with access to another company's roster than they have previously. I think we'll see all of the freak show, comedy, goofball, yuck, yuck, slap, tickle, and, and, and taint fucking crew instead of the serious athletes that they might still have an impact. And I haven't seen the show in so long. I don't know. And And also there is the impact rule which was, I will never, I don't care what they do. I don't care if they resurrect Ray Stevens and put him on our Broadways on Impact every week. I will not watch that show, no matter who asked me to, because of the guy getting married, getting shot, and the fucking murder mystery thing. That That's the impact rule. That's so insulting just on the surface of it. I would never validate their product by actually watching it and talking about it in that respect. It's a fucking joke. In this respect, good on them. They they joined the Bilk a Billionaire Club. I, you know what's next? Is Ian Rotten going to come up, come back up, and he'll come over the rail and get to pull apart with Doctor Luther, and they can have the fat, bald, goofy, slobby, scarred up outlaw championship decided. The fuck is this? I was all for working with honest, competent, legitimate promotions in ring of honor local promotions around the country to help them with our television by having them provide matches on the cards and local promotion and us giving some of their guys work and exposing them along with our guys and and talking about them on television when ring of honor was bought by sinclair they were still somewhat of a parody with some of these local promotions that just didn't have television but this is this is national tnt cable with a big budget versus what's left of a f- the last vanity project in wrestling started by dixie douchebag carter they're so far they ought to be so far above they're not they ought to be but they're not but realistically they should view themselves in that respect good fucking god and <laughs> they <laughs> All right, I give up. Your closing thoughts on that program. I know a lot of people really loved it. A lot of people lost their minds and were really happy to see Sting on their TV again. And I, I can understand and appreciate that. There's, there yes, is- and, and I can also, and it would have been wonderful if he'd have done something. And it would be wonderful if he could help some younger people instead of taking all the attention because he's the only star they fucking got. Go ahead. I think the Battle Royal was awful. And again, I, I've heard from people who really liked it, and they were happy that everyone had something to do in that match, but I, I didn't like it. The Cody match, the match itself didn't gel for me. And again, I'm not going to blame anyone because they're working in 40-degree weather. That yeah, and, and plus they had to slow things down and feature Hobbs, so it couldn't be, you know... Yeah, and he has a lot of potential. Flawless. The Jericho match was embarrassing. The post-match angle, no one brought up the call back to the towel being thrown in for Cody, which defeats the purpose of MJF having the towel there because he's done it before. You've established that. The Britt Baker match was good. The Moxley Omega match, man, it's just not for me. I like Moxley's promos. I don't think I've liked a single match he's had all year. Just not for me. And Omega, I've liked some of Omega's matches at times, but he was doing more Moxley than Moxley was doing Omega here. Because Moxley can't do that. Yeah. Well, and, and and nobody else should do what the shit that Moxley does. You know, like putting someone like Omega in there with an athletic wrestler, you get one thing. But putting him in there with Moxley, and again, there's always the point in the match where it goes to some garbage shit. It's either thumbtacks or a baseball bat and barbed wire yeah. or chairs under the ring. Every match, well, and, in the and middle of the right, match. You're right about that, that if, if you've got Olivier with, like you said, an athlete, you can get something because at le- Olivier's performance of everything, the gymnastics and the athletic performance, his his weakest part of his game is actually trying to look like he's in a fight of any kind, even if it's a real hand-to-hand fight or whether it's this, the garbage weapons fight. That's totally fucking shot with this guy. He can't do it. Yeah, and then him and Callus running out at the end. I mean, I'm not going to watch Impact. Hey, after, after every grand theft, you run out, right? Yeah. 
I mean, just awful. It's just, it's garbage. All right. Well, we'll see more of it next week, I assume. I, from now on, I'm just going to plug a standard Moxley match in and just have it standing by in the VCR or whatever so I can just hit that and I won't have to watch the new stuff. And I can do that and I can say the same thing every week because the same thing happens in every match. 